Lakeland Public Television presents Currents with host Ray Gildow. Sponsored by Nisswa Tax Service, offering tax preparation for individuals and businesses across from the City Hall in Nisswa and on the web at nisswatax.com. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Lakeland Currents, where tonight we're going to be talking about something that's important to all of us, our eye health. And my guest this evening is Dr. Seth Dockin, who is the uh, doctor at the Staples Eye Clinic in Staples, uh, world-renowned traveler, world-renowned fisherman. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, uh, one of our really good young doctors in the, in the area, and I'm very happy to have him on the show this, this evening. Well, Seth, give you. us a little bit about your background, um, where you took your training, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let us know who you are a little yeah. bit. Well, I grew up in uh, a little town out in the middle of North Dakota called Towner, North Dakota. And um, so I went to school there and parents live there still. And I did my undergraduate at the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks. Um, there I met my wife, my beautiful wife of, I don't know, 12 years now. Um, so I did my undergrad there and then I went on to graduate school in Chicago. So I went to Illinois College of Optometry in Chicago. Um, all said and done, it was about nine years of school and um, graduated there about 10 years ago. Uh, my wife, being from Minnesota, wanted to, to move back to Minnesota and, and uh, so um, we did. Uh, we have two beautiful young girls, um, uh, kindergartner and a three-year-old and, and we live right in Staples and we bought the eye clinic there about five years ago and so we we do a lot of primary care. Uh, I see any where yesterday I think my oldest patient was 97 and my youngest wow. patient was three. Wow. And That's so there's certainly a variability <laughs> there. So uh, I think when you practice in rural Minnesota, you you pretty well get used to seeing everything yeah. and um, and that's that, that's 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 my background we we're, were talking a little bit off air about uh, how a, a doctor an optometrist is like a general practitioner a doctor mm -hmm. because the eye field is like all the, the medical fields yeah. today yep. getting very specialized yeah what are some of the specialties that are happening in your field yeah so really within you know m my field I do I think of myself as a lot of times a primary care physician for your eye uh, because I think on a regularly daily basis, I, I send patients to all oh, five or diff 10 different specialists. You know, you have cornea specialists with, which deal with, uh, you know, different ocular diseases and LASIK and those types of things. You have your cataract surgeons, which are, are you know, do that. You have your, your retina specialists, which handle a lot of your diabetics and macular degeneration type patients. You also have your lid specialists, your blepharoplasty type things where we're doing lid lifts and, and oculoplastics. So there's just a, a tremendous amount of specialists in our field and so I really think of myself as a quarterback where I say okay well we need to do this now and we get the patient going in the right direction there. So. Well, and we're going to talk about sort of the three major diseases that people mm -hmm. experience but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. before we do that maybe you could talk a little bit. I know you said over the years you're seeing more and more young people with issues that used to be considered more older people issues mm -hmm. like cataracts. Yeah. What, yep. what, what's causing, do we have any idea what's causing that? Well, I think that what's causing the cataract stuff is really the success of surgery is driving patients uh, to, to be willing to get it done a little earlier. Um, that's what's happening in cataracts, I think. Uh, you have patients where they've talked to their mom or dad or their their spouse or their brother or sister and maybe they're 55 or 60 a little younger on the cataract side but they say gosh I got done with the surgery and my eyes are so much better than they used to be so I think with the success of surgery comes more surgery the other thing is is you get into a lot of systemic diseases uh, you're, there's been an increase in diabetes and, and hypertensive patients and so with that increase 
uh, in diseases, you do get a lot more ocular diseases as a side effect. You know, I think your typical diabetic is going to have cataract surgery probably 10 years sooner wow. than what they would have had it without the diabetes on board. So, so there is an ounce of prevention possible, at least for that disease. A absolutely. By taking care of yourself, losing weight, and not having diabetes. Yeah. Well, and I think <laughs> as a whole, you know, uh, ounce of prevention is, is absolutely it. Uh, not just cataracts, but almost any ocular disease that we look at there's there's very much some systemic components where you say okay this is you know this disease is a little bit more predisposed to to having problems with your eyes how important is wearing sunglasses to the health of your eyes it's definitely important um, you know in Minnesota not as important as in Florida the Sun has less power up here but uh, you know, if you think about your eye, it's really the only organ in your body that's designed to let light in. And we know from our dermatologists and things like that, that, that light is damaging. Light uh, creates problems with your skin, with, with all those things. And, and your eye is really the only organ in your body that actually lets light in. So if, if you don't protect your eyes, they will break down because that, that light gets in and it really damages some stuff for sure. Well, let's start out with cataracts. Mm -hmm. And maybe you could help us understand what cataracts are yeah. and then how are they treated? Yeah, absolutely. It brought a little uh, slide with a couple of boys so that you can see um, what you see here is a, a, a couple of boys with a soccer ball. Uh, one picture is clear and the other one is kind of a demonstration of what you would see with cataracts and most of the time it's just very blurry vision. Um, you know cataracts is the most common cause of blindness in the world today. Um, it, it's preventable, it's very treatable, but I, I think we you know, as Americans, we we fix this stuff all the time, but we don't realize that in the world, these are very, very serious problems when patients get older and get cataracts. Um, most of my cataract patients come in to me thinking that they need new glasses. Oh. Uh, I would say <clears throat> at least three quarters of my patients that need cataract surgery come in to me and they say, you know, doc, I got these glasses two, three years ago and I just, I can't drive at night, I can't read anything anymore without a lot of light, and I, I take a look at their eyes, I take a look at their prescription, and I say, well, you know, all these things are great, but really if you want to see better, it's probably going to take cataract surgery. So technically, what are cataracts? Cataracts are a breakdown of the lens inside the eye. So we're all born with a lens in our eye, just like a lens in a camera, and with age usually um, it will start to break down and it, it becomes opaque and blurry and and, that's, and yellow I've heard of people describe yeah. it as yellowish looking absolutely one you know I see patients one day out of cataract surgery and and that's the most common thing that patients will say one day out of cataract surgery is all my colors are completely <laughs> different you know I had a gal about I don't know six months ago or so she had repainted her house because um, she didn't like any of the colors in her house, and then we had cataract surgery, and she had to she had to go back and repaint her whole house again because she didn't <laughs> like any of the colors she really? had selected. Yeah, wow, that's yeah. Interesting. So, so they, you know, they change the color. Uh, they also dim the vision where uh, night driving is very hard, or you know, gosh, doc, I can read this, but I sure need a lot of light on it, and so they dim the vision down and make it blurry is what happens with cataracts. I remember talking in your office one day about how they first started doing cataract surgery mm -hmm. and how, mm -hmm. compared to, the, to today, how primitive it was. Yeah. Could you talk a little, I think it was in the Vietnam era, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, the, the, from what I understand, the first cataract surgery was kind of during Vietnam. There was a surgeon, a patient had damaged their eye and the lens you know, was no good anymore and they had, you know, they used to have glass implants that they would put inside and so obviously with glass you can't bend it. Um, so they'd have to make large incisions and, and they'd have to stitch everything together. In fact, that surgeon, they, they took away his license. Really? Um, they, they wouldn't let him practice. Later in life, they actually 
put him in the Hall of Fame, you oh, know. Really? But uh, <laughs> but at that time, it was pretty radical surgery to, to take a lens out of somebody's eye and put a new one in, um, and and that's really what's happened over the last 20 years. I think with cataract surgery is that the implant technology has really improved, where we're using these plastic implants and we can fold them, and so the incision sizes are are nothing and. You know, I, I don't even really remember the last cataract patient that I had that actually had a stitch in their mm -hmm. eye. So it's it's all kind of needle driven and and laser driven and and um, so the, the the outcomes have really improved with that. Well, I've had that surgery mm -hmm. in, in both of my eyes, mm -hmm. and I remember the doctor saying, uh, "This will take about seven to nine minutes." Yep. And it didn't take any longer than that. And yep. like you said, the lenses are so small. Mm -hmm. He took it and it was folded, mm -hmm. and he took a laser and just, I don't, it, I don't even remember the laser doing anything. I just remember seeing everything in the room, and then all of a sudden I just saw multiple colors in like a little bowl of soup. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was back in there, yep. and he unfolded that in that little slot, Yep. yep. and that was it. Yeah, so they take the old lens out with, uh, it's called a phaco emulsifier. It, it uses ultrasound technology to, and I always tell patients, it's like a real small shop vac is probably the best way to say it. They take the old lens out, put the new one in, and, and it's they unfold it inside the eye and put it in place. Um, most patients come back and say, I thought they were just going to get started and they said, okay, well, we're done. <laughs> um, and and that, that's cataract surgery. Cataract surgery is the most common surgery performed in the United States today. And cataract surgery is the most successful surgery performed in the United States today. Most of my patients, I, I tell them, if, if you live long enough, you, you will have cataract surgery. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very common, but the vast, vast majority of patients come out of cataract surgery and say, doc, we should have done that. Five years ago, I just see so much better than what yeah. I used to see. It's, it's, I think anytime somebody's doing surgery on our eyes, it's pretty frightening. It is. But I think the bottom line from this debate mm -hmm. right now should be that it doesn't have to be that frightening. It's a pretty mm -hmm. standard surgery, yeah. but there can be complications. What are some of those? There's certainly complications. You can have, uh, you know, you can have infection. That's a very limited risk. In fact, in the 10 years that I've been practicing, uh, being a part of several thousand cataract surgeries every year, I've seen one. Wow. Um, you can have uh, lenses that move or displace after the surgery. Uh, I've seen that happen once. Um, you know, are those correctable? Th they are correctable. Um, you know, usually with infection, they've got a get some high powered antibiotics on board and, and try to clear some of that stuff up. If the implant moves, most often it, it doesn't really cause any problems. It's just if it moves too far, that's where it'll cause a lot of problems. The most common problem with cataract surgery is what we call a secondary cataract, where the body puts a little membrane over the top of the implant. Um, that happens probably about 30% of the time. And so when you get that patient who's had cataract surgery and their vision is great and wow, I'm seeing good. And then you see them back a year later and they say, you know, I kind of feel like my cataract's coming back. What's oftentimes happening there is they're getting a little membrane over the top of that implant that they put in. And, and with a laser in about 15 seconds, uh, your, your wow. ocular surgeon can take that membrane right off. And then is that usually done? It doesn't usually happen again? Doesn't happen again. So no. it's kind of a one-time occurrence for 30% of yeah. patients that have it. 30%, but most <laughs> people have two eyes. And so, you know, a they lot of by. it, it's not, too uncommon to have one eye or the other where we're lasering it off a year or two out. And it's common, isn't it, to have one eye done and another one done later? Yeah, most people, I would say the vast majority of our patient, maybe 80 to 90% will have their surgeries within one to two weeks of each other. Um, just because they come out of the first surgery and they go, holy cow, you, you took my bad eye and made it my good eye, so let's Let's, uh, let's, let's fix the other eye too, and so, yeah. So let's talk about another one of the, the serious eye diseases, the mm -hmm. macular degeneration. Yeah, yeah. And, and what is it? Yeah, macular degeneration is really a breakdown of the retina inside the eye, so that's kind of like the film of the camera. Um, it, it breaks down with age. It's called age-related macular degeneration, and so with 
life uh, with too many birthdays, it, it starts to come up. And um, so there's a couple of different forms of macular degeneration. Um, there's a wet and a dry form of macular degeneration. Macular degeneration affects the central part of the vision. So the same picture with those two boys, what you'll see is that the side of the, of the boys are clear, but that very central part of their faces there is a little bit blurry. So, that, so the macular degeneration's got a, just a gray area in the middle, does it? Just a it? hole right in the middle, yeah. So um, wet macular degeneration is now getting more treatable. We, we actually do do a, a pretty significant amount of uh, shots um, to try to take care of some of that blood vessel growth that's growing underneath the retina in wet macular degeneration. And, and dry macular degeneration, I think there's some things coming, but really prevention is key there. Um, we try to tell patients with strong family histories that you should probably be on some type of a multivitamin with lutein, um, good healthy diet with green leafy vegetables, regular exercise, trying to get more circulation to that retina because oh. really what happens in macular degeneration is that that retina doesn't get the nutrients that it needs mm. and it starts to break break apart with age. Wow. Mm -hmm. It used to be that people who had that would go blind. Yep. Back in the 60s and the 70s. And off air, I was telling you the story of a person I worked with. Mm -hmm. and it's a true story who was diagnosed with macular degeneration and then the next day went out in the garage and poured a five gallon of gas on, gas on himself mm -hmm. and burned himself up. Yeah. Because he just couldn't imagine living blind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not that severe anymore at all, is it? It is not. You know, I mean, Macular degeneration is certainly a pretty serious disease, um, but we've really come a long ways over the last 10 years for sure. And I think looking out, you know, my patients, my young patients, you know, I have patients that come in and they're 35 years old and they say, well, grandpa has macular degeneration, you know, do I need to worry about it? And I say, well, you know, this is a, a long time out and, and, and what our profession and I think most of medicine changes quite rapidly. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a lot of hope, but really it, it, it's about prevention, especially for those younger patients um, and trying not to get to that point where that retina has already broken down um, and, and then it's not really fixable. The eye is a nervous tissue and so just like spinal cord injuries or, or various things like that, it, it doesn't really come back. And so really with any ocular disease, the, the point is, is to catch it early, uh, treat it well, and, and you can really save a lot of vision there for sure. What's the more common, the dry or the wet? Uh, dry. Dry? Yeah, dry macular <clears throat> degeneration is by far more common. Um, wet macular degeneration is more treatable now, um, but dry is, is by far more common than wet. And what was the third? disease that you wanted to emphasize today. But. Yeah, the three major diseases are cataracts, uh, uh, macular degeneration, and glaucoma. Glaucoma. Yeah, glaucoma is the, the second leading cause of blindness in the world uh, today. Um, cataracts being first and and what that is is that's really a, a, a pressure issue where the the pressure inside the eye is a little higher than it should be, and it starts to do damage on the optic nerve in the back part of the Which eye. Which is why you do that test when you go in and have your eyes checked. Exactly, so that's why, you know, everybody you Look at the <laughs> balloon. <laughs> yeah, exactly, so, you know, that's the test that we're probably famous for, I would say, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're always checking pressure. Every time somebody comes in, it's just like your blood pressure when you go to the doctor. It might have been perfect for the last 10 times, but they're probably going to check it every time. Mm -hmm. And so we, we check pressure a lot. Um, what that glaucoma is, is where you start to lose side vision. So again, those those same boys where the face in the center is clear, but all that peripheral vision starts to go away with the glaucoma patients. Glaucoma is, you know, I think one of the probably easier diseases that we deal with. Really? Um, it, it, it's, it's so treatable, it, it, you can catch it quite readily, um, you know, with regular eye care, almost any practitioner should be able to pick up on glaucoma 
pretty easily. And usually with medications or things like that, different types of surgeries, you can lower that eye pressure. And really most of our glaucoma patients never have any problems wow. with their vision. So, That's encouraging. So macular degeneration is, is the, you know, the leading cause of vision loss in the United States. And especially when you deal with the population up here, that, that kind of European, Caucasian uh, population, they're a lot more predisposed. So when you get that patient, and I, I try to tell them that up front where they're kind of that blonde hair, blue eyed, lighter complected patient, you really want to be careful with sun exposure and, and things like that because that's where you see a lot of macular degeneration is the, those lighter complected individuals. Well, is there anything new happening in uh, transplants mm -hmm. with, with the eye itself? Is, is, there, is there any progress being made in that field? There is. There, they, they've started to do a few retinal transplants so where you're, where you're taking that macular degeneration patient and replacing that retina a little bit. Wow. Uh, last time I checked, they had done 17 in the nation. So, wow. you know, my patients that come in and say, well, we should, we should do this. I saw it on the news. <laughs> I say, well, it's, uh, it's not quite there yet. They've done 17. And from what I understand, there was 10 of them that were successful. Really? And so I, I think, you know, as I look, 10, 15 years out, there certainly is some hope there um, with the retinal transplant and stem cell stuff. Just like you've seen news stories where this person with a spinal cord injury is all of a sudden walking again. So we're starting to get to a point where we can affect nerves, but at this point in time, it's not a very common procedure that we do. That's amazing, though. Yeah. To, and, and where is that research being done for the most part? Uh, is well, it all over scattered, sort of? Yeah, it's kind of scattered, but you know, most of it is at your big major hospitals, your Dukes and John Hopkins okay. and, and those types. They're the cutting edge places yeah, for that. Yeah, the cutting edge research facilities, Harvard's, and, and yeah. So. Well, let's talk about something near and dear to my heart, floaters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is a floater? Yeah. Because if you're, I suppose if you're 20 years old or 25 years old, you've not heard about floaters, <laughs> although they can be they there can. too, can't yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a floater is a breakdown of a gel inside the eye called the vitreous. Um, and it's common. With age, it, it breaks down on ever, almost everybody. Um, and you start to notice these little bugs floating around your vision. I, in fact, have one in my right eye, which is my shooting eye, so it does bother me a little bit when I'm out duck hunting. Um, but it, it breaks down and, and um, you know, very common. Um, for the most part, and I tell most of my patients, the vast majority of floaters are very benign and they're, they're best left alone. There are some surgeries to take them out, but those surgeries are inherently a little risky compared to leaving the, the floater. Where you want to be careful is if you have a sudden onset of floaters with a lot of flashes where you're getting these lightning streaks kind of coming through the vision and you start to feel like you're losing some peripheral vision. Because as those floaters break off, they can take the retina with them. And that's where you get into the the retinal tears, the retinal detachments, those types of things. This so. fall, the Vikings coach had that issue and mm -hmm. more than one time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's mm -hmm. not an uncommon problem, is it? Not uncommon. We certainly have you know, several patients um, every year or every month probably that we're sending down to retina specialists to get lasered down um, or to have a retinal detachment repaired. Um, any sudden onset of new floaters should really be looked at pretty quickly. I, I know in, in our office, our staff knows that if, if somebody calls up and says, hey, I have a new floater, they say, well, how does noon work or how does uh, 8 o'clock right tomorrow morning work? You try to get them in right away. Um, the vast majority when you see that new floater patient are benign. Uh, they don't cause any problems but they're just irritating they are irritating <laughs> yes absolutely they they are irritating and and you know I, we do have some patients that go through the surgery to take them out 
uh, if they get irritating enough, but the vast majority we just try to. And like you said, that's a pretty high risk surgery too. It is, you know. I mean, <clears throat> it, 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 it's it's not a. It, it, most surgeries nowadays are pretty successful, um, but the consequences in eye surgeries tend to be very very high. So even floater surgery, which tends to be you know, uh, pretty successful. I mean, if something goes wrong, you do have a patient that might not see anymore. And so the consequences with what we do, and that's what you were saying, is, is it, it's pretty high and people get nervous about doing any sort of eye surgery. Right. How about another common issue and that's seeing flashing lights? Yep. Flashing lights is when that retina is getting a little tension on it. So the retina is about the thickness of saran wrap. So it's very, very thin. And so anything that pulls on it, you will get a little flash. And flashes, again, just like floaters, should probably be investigated, usually we say within 24 hours. But they are often not serious too, are they? Again, just like floaters, often very, very benign. And so they, the vast majority of the time, there's nothing going on. But you do have situations where we are, taking just like the Vikings head coach and he's having an emergency retinal surgery. See the retina, if it detaches, has to be reattached very quickly. Wow, that's um, gotta be a really finite surgery. It oh. is, you know, I think some of the retina specialists that we work with are, are the best surgeons in the world really. And, and uh, you know, when you start to try to take saran wrap and put it back together, uh, it, it's tough, it's wow. difficult. So not all retinal surgeries come out great, but the vast majority do. Um, so, so those Well, we're things. down to about the last minute, but mm -hmm. let's talk about one more issue that I know, yep. that I've, I've experienced and I know is pretty common too, those ocular headaches. Mm -hmm. Could you explain what, is, what it, that is? Yeah, when you get like an ocular migraine. Yeah, ocular migraines are, are very common and what that is is that's a little bit of a hiccup to the blood supply going to the eye and you get that you, you get a, that same kind of where it gets blurry in your eyes um, once that blood supply comes back um, usually the eye will restore back to normal but but a lot it's of times we have ziggy ziggy little things is what I've seen on the top and I have only experienced it maybe a couple of times in my life but, yep. but it makes you a little nervous yeah and we're always investigating in those situations you know how is your blood pressure how is your blood sugar because a lot of times it is kind of little hiccups in the blood supply going going up to your eye oh, essentially wow. is what causes a lot of those and and again the vast majority of the time they're pretty benign, but you're going to want to get any new changes investigated pretty quickly. So. so how do people get a hold of you, Seth? Yeah, you can call our office, uh, the Staples Eye Clinic. Our phone number is 218-894-1331. We also have a website, stapleseyeclinic.com, which is a, a good place, and a, a Facebook page, which is run by my wife because I'm not super Facebook <laughs> compatible, but um, so yeah, those would probably be the best ways to get a hold of us and we certainly welcome new patients and, and uh, we, we love to see new faces and, and try to give them the best care possible for their eyes. Well, thanks for jumping on the show with us. We appreciate it. Uh, Very good information. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You've been watching Lakeland Currents where we're talking about what you're talking about. I'm Ray Gildow. So long until next time. 